If we want to halt the oxidation of a primary alcohol at the aldehyde stage, we can't use a strong oxidizing agent like chromic acid. We have to use what's called a weak oxidation protocol. And these conditions don't operate on aldehydes. Reaction with aldehydes is either extremely slow or non-existent. And so what happens under these conditions is that primary alcohols are oxidized selectively to the aldehyde stage. And as we mentioned in the last video, these conditions also work to convert secondary alcohols, which have just two hydrogens that can be lost to form a carbonyl group, to ketones. And there are three sets of conditions we're going to look at in this video in detail. The first is a chromium-based reagent that's less reactive than chromic acid called pyridinium chlorochromate, or PCC. The second is kind of a witch's brew of reagents, if you will, that's collectively called the Swern oxidation. This involves the use of dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO, COCl2, which is a reagent called oxalochloride, and an amine base such as triethylamine. And finally, we'll look at oxidation by a periodinate called Des-Martin periodinate, or DMP, which contains iodine in a very high oxidation state. And so at this point, seeing all the reagents on one slide, it's a good moment to note the oxidation states of the key atoms within these either intermediates generated, for example, in the Swern oxidation, or, or the reagents themselves. So if we look at chromium, here again, just like chromic acid, we see chromium in the plus six oxidation state. We no longer have that strong acid around, which makes these conditions a little more mild than chromic acid, but the high oxidation state chromium is key to the reactivity of PCC. In the Swern oxidation, the whole idea is to generate sulfur in the plus four oxidation state. Sulfur with a positive charge and three things linked to it. And so we can think of this as sulfur at the level of plus four, and that oxidation number wants to come down. This sulfur wants to be reduced, and in the course of doing that, it can oxidize an alcohol to an aldehyde or ketone. In the Desmartin periodinane, we see an unnaturally large number of bonds to iodine. In fact, there are one, two, three, four, five bonds to iodine in this structure, and that gives iodine the plus five oxidation state, we might say. So all three of these very high oxidation numbers want to come down. That's reduction of the reagent, and in the process, the alcohol is oxidized. The beauty of PCC is that it's much, much less acidic than chromic acid, and so it doesn't engage with aldehydes, but it does have the ability to convert a primary alcohol into an aldehyde, which is, of course, a net oxidation process because we've lost the elements of H2. The reagent itself is an ionic salt consisting of the pyridinium cation, which is pyridine. Pyridine is a nitrogen-containing aromatic compound bearing a hydrogen on the basic nitrogen atom, paired with the chlorochromate anion. And this has the same oxidation level as chromic acid, but a chlorine has replaced one of the hydroxyl groups, and the other hydroxyl group has been deprotonated. And so the structure of the chlorochromate anion looks like this. This is the Lewis structure of PCC. And in looking at how this is going to engage with an alcohol, one of the things to notice is that the chromium is not only in a very high oxidation state, but also connected to a good leaving group. This makes the chromium atom electrophilic, and this is key to the reactivity of PCC. The pyridinium ion, while it looks acidic, is not acidic enough to protonate an alcohol oxygen. However, that chromium atom at the center of chlorochromate is definitely electrophilic enough to be attacked by the nucleophilic alcohol oxygen. Let's look now at a detailed mechanism for this process. The electrophilicity of the chromium atom in chlorochromate is key, and in the first elementary step, we have nucleophilic attack by the alcohol oxygen on that chromium with displacement of chloride as a leaving group, and this is an SN2 elementary step. In the resulting product, the alcohol oxygen is now positively charged, and the hydrogen linked to that oxygen is now acidic and can be deprotonated. And that oxygen is quite acidic because of the attached high oxidation state chromium. And so this proton transfer step can be done with a relatively weak base like water. And the intermediate that results should look very familiar. We have an oxygen bearing an alkyl group on the left and a chromium atom on the right with two doubly bound oxygens and one anionic oxygen. I'm going to abbreviate that as CrO3 minus. In fact, this intermediate is just a chromate ester. We've seen it previously in the context of oxidation using chromic acid. 
And so from here, the mechanism is exactly analogous to the action of chromic acid. We have a good leaving group in the form of CrO3 minus, really the high oxidation state. Chromium there is the key. And beta to that, we have a hydrogen that has been acidified by the presence of that great leaving group. And so, again, a relatively weak base, something like water or an oxygen atom in the solvent, if, say, an ether solvent is used, can deprotonate at the beta position, engaging in an E2 elementary step. This generates the aldehyde product and H3O plus as a byproduct, and the other byproducts that are generated are an H3O plus in the second step, the proton transfer, and chloride anion in the first SN2 step. Cl acted as a leaving group or nuclear fusion that step, and so anionic chloride is generated there as well.